Okay, very good. <clears throat> All right, let's consider uh, this uh, uh, quiz nine first. All right, in quiz nine, uh, we have the following problems. <clears throat> Use fundamental identities to fully simplify the expression. Eight and 12. Okay, for question eight, um, we need to be aware, okay, these ones, right? Firstly, cotangent, negative x, right? So cotangent negative x is, cotangent is uh, all the function, right? It's all the functions, so it is a negative cotangent x, right? So that's cosecant times cosine times cotangent. That is this one minus, because the negative sign can take to the front, right? So we got this one, negative cosine cotangent. Now cosecant is one over sine, and cosine cotangent is cosine over sine. So we have what? Sine, one over sine minus cosine square, right, over sine. Yes, this is actually cosine square over sine x, yes. So it's a sine one over sine minus cosine square over sine. So we can put them together is one, oh, one minus cosine square over sine. One over cosine square is sine square. So sine square over sine, that is sine. Make sense? Okay, so this is question eight. Question eight, uh, four points. Not question 10, uh, question 12, sorry. This should be 12. Um, we have negative sign, okay, so uh, there is a blah, blah, over cotangent x equals, all right, sine inverse, sine negative is negative sign because sine is an odd function, right? So it's negative, negative sign times cosine, second is one over cosine, cosecond is one over sine, Tangent is sine over cosine. Uh, over cotangent is cosine over sine. Now negative negative become positive. So sine x, cosine x, one over cosine, one over sine, sine over cosine. That's on the top. On the bottom is cosine over sine. So sine x and sine x cancel out. Cosine and cosine cancel out. So we have what? That is sine x over cosine x on the top, right? That's on the top, what's remaining. Now over this one, cosine over sine, that's what? Times the reciprocal of the bottom, right? So sine over cosine times the sine over cosine. Yes. Okay, so this is tangent, this is tangent. So tangent, tangent, tangent square. Does that make sense? Okay, someone has made errors. All right, be careful. Uh, see where you made this error and um, why it is not right. Okay, you need to understand that. All right, be careful. Someone has made a, a very a simple errors there. Okay, so this is question five. Uh, this is five points. Six. In terms of the second, all right, so this is a similar uh, example we did in class. Uh, tangent plus cotangent over cosecant, all right, cosecant. So tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine, uh, uh, cosecant is one over sine. So what we can do is we can multiply sine to the top and bottom, right? So on the top and the bottom. So the bottom become simply one. One over sine times sine, that's one. This one disappear. So only left is the top. So sine times the first term, and sine square over cosine. Now this one times the second term, sine sine cancel out, and that's cosine. Does that make sense? Okay. Now we want to use in terms of cosine, right? So we got to change the sine square x to an expression in terms of cosine. So that is one minus cosine square. Over cosine plus cosine. Now that's one over cosine minus cosine square over cosine. 
minus cosine x squared over cosine and plus cosine. Yes? Now this is one cosine and this is cosine, cosine cancel out, which it re remains a negative cosine, right? Plus cosine. So this one, this one cancel out. So what's left is this. Does that make sense? Questions? Nick, hmm? do you have any questions? No. No, Good. okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so just uh, um, be, be aware, uh, some of us made some, uh, you know, especially algebra. It's not because we do not know the, uh, the trig function, the relations, the identities. We know everything about that. The, Hard part is the algebra part, right? How to do the transformations from one to near to another, right? Using algebra, okay? The algebra knowledge, all right? That's the uh, major issue we had in on this quiz. I can see from this quiz, okay? So, uh, well, that's in total. That's what the fourteen points, okay? Fourteen points. Now let's consider the homework. Any questions about the homework? I got number 29. Number 29. Okay. 29. Number 29. Uh, so it's uh, involves. Uh, okay, 29. Okay, so uh, for the following, verify the identity, right? Verify the identity. So for this one, uh, we want to see that the left equals the right. So the left is cosine x minus cosine cube x equals what? So they have common terms, right? Cosine x. So it is cosine x, one minus what? Cosine square x, yes? That, that, that's where I'm like, how, how, did, how did you get the one? As I looked at the back of the book and I, I found the one, I was like, how did they get the one? Well, you see, From the cube. you have cosine x, the cosine x equals cosine times one. Okay. Uh, okay, I see, I see what you did. I got it. Okay, so it is cosine x times one minus cosine x times cosine square x, right? So which is cosine x one minus cosine square x, right? So that is what we have, cosine x sine square x. Okay, very good, a very good question. Now this is a very common trick, all right? You've got to know that uh, this uh, variable equals it times one, right? And then use that, okay, very good. Uh, any other questions on the quiz, on the homework? Uh, I have a question about uh, number 15. 15, okay. Number 15, now this one, right? Okay, let's consider this one, uh, how to simplify this question, all right, using these identities. Now, um, on the top, we have one minus cosine, so it's better just write it as what? As, um, as a sine, right? Sine square x over tangent, uh, x square is uh, sine square x over cosine square. Yes. Okay. And plus two sine square x. So this one equals what? Now sine x, it equals uh, sine x square times well, this is a ratio, you need to times the reciprocal of this one, right? So it's times cosine square x over sine x square. Yes, does that make sense? All right, yeah. and then plus two sine square x. Now, sine and sine cancel out, yes. And then this one equals what? And this one equals cosine square x plus uh, two sine x squared can be written as a sine x squared 
plus psi square x. Yes. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Um, how how did we uh, put on sine uh, square root of x? This one. Uh, square root of x. What do you mean? No, no, no. Sine uh, square uh, square root of x, and then x cosine square root x by sine two x. The one you canceled the both. Well, you you have oh, canceled. So this is sine square. The bottom yeah, is sine. Yeah, Sine square, so they can cancel out, right? So it's, it is what? It equals, okay. So let me just rewrite this one, all right? So you have, this is a sine square x times what? Sine square x, yes? So you mm. mean is how can you cancel out these two, right? Yeah. Okay, so this one can be rewritten as what? sine square x times cosine square x over sine square x. Yes? Mm. Plus two sine square x. So you see that the top and the bottom, they are the same, right? Mm. So you can cancel them out. So what if it, if it's plus? We can, we can't cancel out, right? If it's plus. oh yeah, if it is plus, you cannot. This is a product, right? This is a product. Ah, uh, so, so only multipli can... multiplication and division you can yes. cancel out. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. That's yeah, right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Now this one equals cosine square x plus. Now two sine square is the sine square x plus sine square x. Yes, that's two sine square x. So, but this is two, the summation is one, one plus sine square x, right? Okay, very good. Okay, any other questions on homework nine, uh, homework eight? Thirty-seven, please. Thirty-seven. All Special. right, thirty-seven. Uh, thirty-seven here. Okay. Uh, prove or disprove this identity. All right, thirty-seven here. Okay. So tangent uh, times that. Tangent A is what? Sine x over cosine of x. Over a uh, second is one over cosine. Yes. And then you multiply sine inverse is what? Sine negative is negative sine x. Yes, it's because it's odd function, right? So mm -hmm. therefore this one equals on um, the top is sine x over cosine x. Now over this one is times the reciprocal of the bottom, right? So mm -hmm. times cosine x over one, yes? And then times negative sign, right? Times negative sign. So uh, you can take the negative sign in the front, and here is the sign x. Yes. So this one equals now cosine and cosine cancel out. So it equals what? Negative uh, sine square x. Right. Now, of course, negative sine square x does not equal cosine square x, right? So let's disapprove this one. Make sense? Where, where did the negative sign on top here on that first one come from? Where, where it becomes sine well, over cosine? E, you, mean, you mean this one? Uh, no, the other one. Um, this one? Uh, yeah, the, how did it become? How did it become negative sine x there? Oh, yeah, because you have what the sine negative x. It's all a function, right? Mm -hmm. So sine negative x equals what? Sine x. Negative sine x. x. Okay. So it because sine is odd. Okay. Right? But all the identity sine negative x is negative sine. But cosine is even function. So cosine negative x equals cosine. Okay. So that's how. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. 
Very good question. Any other questions? I got 17. 17. Okay, very good. Right? Question 17, this one. Okay, so let's do this one together here. Okay, 17. Uh, we want to express this one in terms of sine, or in terms of sine. So let's do that. All right, let's do that. So firstly, uh, second is one over cosine. Cosecant is one over sine. Okay, so let's just express all of these in terms of sine and cosine first. All right, so second is one over cosine x. And this is one over sine of x over one plus what? Sine x over cosine x. Does that make sense? Yeah, this would be true, right? Now let's just uh, multiply, say, uh, cosine on the top and the bottom, right? Because here is so have a cosine here cosine, right? So you want to, in terms of sine, so let's multiply cosine on top and bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So now if I multiply cosine, right, it equals what? This one times cosine of x, and this term times cosine of x. Yes. I can multiply cosine on top and bottom, and I got something, right? I will got something. So this one m equals the top is cosine and cosine cancel out. Yes. Be one over cos one over sine. One plus uh, cosine x over sine. Yes. Cosine times this is one. Cosine times this is this one. Good. Now the bottom is cosine plus what? Cosine times this one, cosine, cosine tau, cosine plus sine. Yes? Does that make sense? Now, this one, you can uh, do that, all right? It equals what? You can see some something interesting here, all right? If you multiply sine, on top and the bottom. All right, now you multiply sine on top and bottom, okay? So this is a little trick here you want to do, All right? So this is one plus uh, cosine over sine x, right? Now what I want to do is I multiply sine on top and the bottom. Can I do that? Yes. Now, on the top, it became what? Sine x plus sine sine cancel out, that's cosine x. Yes. On the bottom, I still have cosine x plus sine x times the sine of x. Yes. Now, cosine x plus sine and sine x plus cosine, they're all the same. So they can cancel out. So it equals what? One over sine x. Does that make sense, Mustafa? What I did is from the beginning, like the, the first step you did, where you multiply yeah. cosine on top of bottom. Mm -hmm. What I did is on the uh, the top on top of the on top of the fraction, I multiplied the right by cosine top and bottom, and then the left by sine top and bottom. So now we have the bottoms is cosine times sine, and the top is cosine plus sine. From the beginning, that's what I did. Um. So when you are multiplying. Uh, I, was, I was trying to get like a common denominator. That's what I was trying to get. So what did beginning. what did you multiply? The one over sine. I multiplied it top and bottom by cosine. So one one times cosine and sine x times cosine. Oh, like oh, 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 okay, okay. On the left, I did one times sine and then cosine times sine. 
Okay. And then you have common denominators and you combine them. Uh, you should be able to do that as well, I believe. Okay. I believe so. All right. You should be able to do that as well. And But uh, be careful. You just uh, have to times the sign here uh, for the bottom as well, right? For the bottom yeah, yeah. as well. So you will have sine and cosine uh, on the bottom. And, and you can do that as well. Well, there is no, uh, there are, there can be multiple different ways, right? There can I, be I multiple. I just wanted to see how you'll do it. Yeah, that's well, idea. yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, different, uh, you know, the, it, it's for certain master, it maybe works better for certain people, right? So you just, uh, but I, but you should no matter what you use you should get something similar some the the, the correct answer right so that uh, that will be uh, all rows leads to Rome right so you you can you can work with it right so you can use different methods to do that okay very good I like that okay uh say any um. Other questions on the Homer 8? Mm. Good. All right. And that, let's do that then. Okay. So we got this one now. We want to move on to our lectures now. Lecture three. Okay. So now in last class, we introduced uh, uh, many identities, right? So Pythagorean identity, even odd identity, uh, reciprocal identity, and so on, right? So we use many of them. And uh, using those identities, we can simplify our expression or verify something, uh, some equation, and so on, right? So we did several examples in last class. Today, we are going to do more examples. Now, let's consider this example. Salim, can you read it for us, please? Yeah, yeah. verify. Cosine theta. Theta by one plus sine theta equal one negative sine theta over cosine theta. Very good. All right, very good. Let's consider this one. Solution. Uh solution. Okay, proof. Uh how can we do this? How can we do this? Now for this uh, verification, all right? So you want to prove that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, right? They are equal to each other. Now, there are certain ways you can do so. All right, there are certain ways you can do so. Okay, so now for this one, uh, what we can do is, all right, what we can do is, now let's consider the left-hand term, all right, left-hand term, cosine theta over one plus sine theta. Now, whenever you got something like one, one plus sine or one minus sine or one plus cosine or one minus cosine, you immediately come up with certain things about one minus sine square theta equals cosine square theta. That's the Pythagorean identity, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. it will help. But this one is usually what? It's a difference of two squares. So it is one minus a sine and one plus sine, right? Okay. So you have a one minus a one plus sine, right? So uh, one thing you want to do, change this uh, summation into a square. What you want to do is you can do multiply what? One plus a sine, one minus a sine. And a cosine theta, one minus sine. Basically, what we, what we did is just to multiply one minus sine on the top and bottom. Yes? Mm -hmm. Well, we did this. Okay. So then this one equals what? Cosine theta, one minus sine theta. On the bottom is one plus one minus. So that's one minus sine square theta, right? And then this means it equals cosine theta, one minus sine theta over 
Pythagorean identity is cosine square theta. Now cosine theta and cosine square theta, they can cancel one out. So this one equals what? One minus sine theta over cosine theta. Does that make sense? Okay, so therefore we proved that from the left hand side equals the right hand side. Okay, so an important, of course, word we use here is the Pythagorean identity. So that's very common for uh, the uh, for uh, for expressions one plus a sine or one minus sine or one plus cosine or one minus cosine. All right, so. so the one minus sine times one plus sine. Can you use that if it was one minus sine? I know we don't have to use it, but like it yeah. would be the same. Would be yeah, same. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 very common. I mean, we we are talking about the uh, trigonometric expressions, right? So you uh, you in many cases, right? It's not always the case, but in many majority of the cases, uh, they want you know we can get something different. Uh, by changing what that one to uh, by multiplying one minus or one plus, uh, changing to cosine square, right? So we can got something different. Would that be the same for tangent and secant and cosecant? Everything. Uh, yes. You want to use certain formulas, right? Yeah, Pythagorean identity or something others. Now this is no nothing can guarantee that it works. But you got to try, right? So this is always uh, trial and error, trial and error. But um, when you got when you when you got more experienced, right? When you got more experienced as you do do more work, now you will know what you should do in many cases, right? So that means what we got to do more practice here uh, for these type of questions. Okay, it's not easy. But that's something we got to do, right? Okay. All right, consider this one. All right, Nick, can you read for us, please? Yes, determine whether the identity is true or false. Secant uh, tangent plus ten, uh, yeah, plus tangent over cotangent plus cosine equals secant, uh, equals second squared. Okay, Theta. very good. Okay, very good. All right, solution. Okay, solution here. All right, so let's consider uh, this one. All right, second tangent O A equals second square. All right, so we basically want to prove from the left to the right. All right, so uh, the one way to do so is just, well, transform them into sine and cosines. That's better, All right? That works better. Second theta plus tangent theta over cotangent theta plus cosine theta equals one over cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. Bottom is cosine theta over sine theta and uh, plus cosine theta, right? Over plus uh, over cosine theta. So uh, this one can be done by what? Um, okay, so let's just... Uh, uh, multiply, maybe multiply, uh, what? There are certain ways to do so. Uh, okay, so what you can do is, you can see this relationship, all right? So uh, bottom and top by cosine, yes, you can do that. Mm, yes, let's do that, all right, what times, Cosine on top and bottom, all right? So if this one is going to be uh, cosine one over cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta, all right, times cosine theta, right? And at the bottom, you times uh, cosine theta over sine theta plus cosine theta, then times cosine theta. Yes, okay. Now, on the top, it became one, all right? And this one, cosine, 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 that's one plus sine of theta. So on the bottom, 
Now we can write this one as what? Okay, so it is uh, one cosine theta squared. All right, it became one over, uh, it equals what? One over sine theta plus one times cosine theta and times cosine theta, right? Because the bottom two, they have two, uh, they have what? Two, um, two identical terms, cosine, right? So cosine okay. theta, cosine theta. So if you multiply them into this, you got this one as well. All right, so you got this one, right? So then what you can do is this equals what? One plus sine one plus sine theta uh, over one over sine theta plus one and times one over cosine square theta. Yes. That makes sense. Or you can write that uh, well instead of here. All right, we are we can change this one to uh, instead of plus one. You can say this is sine theta over sine theta. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. It's the same, right? It is the same. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, now you see something interesting. All right, what is this? Oops. Uh, second squared theta. That's the second square theta, right? That's the second square theta. Mm -hmm. All right. Now then, what about the okay? So which equals uh, one plus sine of theta? Now on the bottom, I can I, ha I also have something interesting, right? If I do uh, this one over sine of one over sine theta. Now in the parentheses, is it gonna be what? One plus sine of theta. Yes? If you take a sine, one over sine theta out, that's one plus sine theta, yes? And times tangent, uh, second, second, times second square theta, yes? Okay, now you see that one plus sine and a one plus sine cancel out, right? Now that's become one over one over sine theta. So if this one equals what? Sine theta, right? So one over one over sine theta is one times sine theta over one, right? So that's sine theta times second square theta. Does uh, that make sense? Should, it, should it be one over sine theta? Well, no, because here, it is, all right, let me just put it here, all right? So put in this place here. Let's just consider the first term, one plus sine theta over, one over sine theta, one plus sine of theta, right? So what this equals, right? Now you can see that this one equals, um, now this one and this one canceled out, yes? So it equals what? One over one over sine, yes? Yeah. So this one equals what? One times the reciprocal of the bottom. That's the sine of theta over one, right? Mm. Okay, so this one equals what? Sine of theta. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, very good. So we, in the end, we got is the sine theta times the second theta square, right? So this one is false, okay. right? It's a false. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay. All right, okay. That's this one. I think we're going to now, okay. So we're done with section 3.1. Now, as we said, there is a lot of identities and uh, a lot of algebra techniques.
Now, in order to fully um, be, uh, be, uh, be, be really good at this, you got to, we got to do, do more practice, all right? That's why we have a lot of homework questions and quiz ones and, right, and examples here. Now, uh, now let's move on to section 3.2. That's the sum and difference identities, especially for sine, cosine, and tangent, all right? So now uh, here, this one is extremely important. All right, because many examples will be just using these special angles on a unit circle. All right, we, we, we will use this. All right, so this is the same unit circle where the what? The previous ones are in the uh, chapter one. Okay, it's the same one. Okay, so you can see these are all special angles. There are multiples of uh, pi over six, pi over four, or pi over three, right? So they all give up here. Firstly, we are going to talk about the sum and difference formulas for cosine. All right, this is for cosine. Now, one is the cosine for the sum formula for cosine. All right, we have what? The cosine of a summation of two angles, alpha plus beta equals what? Now, be careful for the cosine is cosine beta, cosine alpha times cosine beta minus. All right, it's minus sine alpha, sine beta, all right? Be careful, here is a minus, all right? And the product of two cosine, cosines, minus the product of two sines, all right? That's the cosine alpha plus beta. Now for cosine alpha minus beta, instead it's gonna be the summation. Uh, plus, all right, sine alpha times sine beta. Okay, so be careful of the sign, all right? If this is alpha, the summation alpha plus beta, then this is minus. If this is the difference alpha minus beta, then this is plus, all right? You just use the, uh, def use the other uh, sign, right? So be careful on that. Make sense? All right, let's consider the example here. All right, one example here. Mustafa, can you read for us, please? Uh, uh, find the exact values a cosine of uh, pi, pi over four minus pi over six and b cosine of 75 degrees. Yeah, very good. All right, thank you. Now let's consider a. Now you can see that we use the special angles, right? These are multiples of pi over six or pi over four. Okay, so these are special angles. Now, firstly, A, what do you see A? A here is a difference, yes? There's a difference between two special angles, yes? Okay, it's a difference. So cosine of the difference using the formula, what do we have for that? It is gonna be the cosine of the first angle, five pi over four, Cosine of the second angle is the pi over six minus or plus? Uh, plus. It should be plus, all right, because the cosine for the difference is going to be the summation. Uh, it's going to be the summation. All right, and sine, the first day is a five pi over four, and sine of pi over six. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Then this one equals what? What is cosine five pi over four? Special angles. What is cosine of this one? This is the pi plus pi over four, right? In the third quadrant, in the third quadrant, yes? So the quadrant is uh, pi over four is what is half, right? Half of pi over two. So what is that? Negative two pi over two? Negative two pi. No, 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 that's not, that's not. What is the cosine? Okay, consider this, right? Consider this right a circle. So you can see that negative, it's negative square two over two as the x-coordinate, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cosine. 
So negative square root of two over two. That is cosine this one times cosine power of six. What is cosine power of six? Square root of three over two. Square root of three over two. Very good. All right. And sine five power over four is what? What is that? Negative two pi over two. No, we are talking about the sine. Negative square root. Two. Square root of two over two. All right, check the uh, check this one, right? So the, the second one is also negative square root two over two. All right, so that's a sign, right? Y coordinate. What is sign pi over six? One half. One half. All right, very good. All right, one half. And then you, we just uh, simplify this. Right, this one equals on the top, that's negative square root of two times the square root of three. That's what? Negative, negative square root of two times negative square root of three. Or what is that? Square root of three. Yes, what is that? This equal to square root of what? Two times three. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay, negative square, uh, this is negative sign, right? You don't forget this negative sign, right? So it's negative square root of two, which is negative what? Negative square root of six. Yes, very good. All right, negative square root of six over two by two is? Four. four. Right? So, and then for the second, we know that that's what, uh, minus, right? Square root of two over two by two, that's a four, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this one equals, they have the common denominator, negative square root of six minus square root of two. That is the answer, right? That is the answer. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Right, so that's basically what we did, right? We use the cos the difference formula for cosine, right, between two special angles here, and then we find or uh, find that the cosine and sine for each of these two special angles. Just to plug in the formula, simplify it. We got the answer, right? We got the answer. Very good. How about B? Uh, it was cosine. Uh, 75 degree. So what shall we use? Uh, this is 75 degrees. Not, 75 is not a special angle, right? It's not a special angle. But um, can we write it as the summation or difference of two special angles? 45 plus 30. Very good, right? 75 is 45 plus 30. So 45 degree is a special angle, 30 degrees a special angle. So that's excellent, right? As a cosine of 45 degree plus 30 degree. Ah, uh, we can write this one as a summation of two special angles. Now, from the formula for the summation of cosine, right? Uh, summation formula for cosines, this one equals what? Cosine 45 degree time, uh, times cosine Cosine of 30 degree minus or plus? Minus. Should be minus, minus. all right? If the summation here is minus, sine 45 degree and cosine. Uh, sorry, sine, sine. 30 degree, okay? So this one equals cosine 45 degree equals what? Square root of two over two. Yes, square root of two over two. Now, what about? Cosine 30, 30 degrees. Uh, square root of three over two. Square root of three over two, very good, all right? So 30 degree is a pi over six, mm -hmm. yes? Great. Minus sine 45 degree is square root same of two as two. cosine, right? Uh, and times uh, sine 30 degree is? One half. One half, very good. All right, so now this one equals square root of three times square root of, uh, square root of two times square root of three is square root of? Six, six over four minus square root of two over four, right? Mm -hmm. 
So you can put them together as square root of six minus the square root of two over four, right? If you want to, right? So this is gonna be the answer. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so that is how we can use the summation formula and difference formula to find the cosine of certain angles, right? Of certain angles. All right, now let's consider another example. Uh, Joshua. Find the exact value of cos uh, 105 degrees. Okay, very good. All right, so how can we do this one? Cosine of 105 degrees. What is this one? How do you think? Uh, this 105 is not a special angle, but can we put them into a summation or difference of two special angles? What is that? It'd be 60 and 45. 60 and 45! Love that, right? So that is awesome. I like it. Okay, so it equals cosine of 60 degree plus 45 degree. Now that's a summation, right? That's a summation. Can you go ahead and solve this one first, please? Can you go ahead and solve it? Okay. All right, did we got the same answer? Yes, okay, very good. All right, cosine 60 degree is one half. Cosine 45 degree is square root over two. Sine cosine 60 is square root of three over two. And so on, just plug in and simplify it, you got this answer, okay? So that's this example. Now, let's consider a sum and difference formulas for the signs. All right, so we just introduced the, the, the formula for cosine. Now let's consider for sines, all right? So the sum formula is sine alpha plus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta plus. All right, for sine, they are consistent, right? If this is a summation, then here is also a summation. And then cosine alpha sine of beta, okay? And then you have what? Then you have uh, sine of alpha minus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine of beta. Okay, so basically that's how we do this. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so that's what we have. All right, sine and cosine. Okay, all right. Now let's consider uh, this um, formula here. Okay, so let's consider that. All right, consider this one. Now find the exact, okay, so uh, this is uh, Zhong Xu. Sine 5 pi over 4 plus pi over 3. B okay. sine 15, 15, 15 degrees. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. That's very good. Okay, now let's consider a solution, right? That's the summation of two special angles. So what is that? This one equals what? Sine of the first times cosine of the second, right? 
right? Sine of 44 pi, uh, 5 pi over 4 times cosine of the second. Plus or minus? Positive. Plus. Okay. So, and then cosine of phi pi over three. Okay. So it just, uh, this one is negative square root of two over two times uh, this one is one half plus negative square root of two over two. Uh, this is square root of three, right? Over two. Okay. So you see that this one equals uh, negative square root of two over four minus all right, square root of six over four is negative square root of two minus square root of six over four. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about B? Sign of 15 degrees. Now, this one can be written as what? 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Awesome. Awesome. Right? So uh, this is going to be 45 degree minus 30 degrees. Right? So which equals sine 45 cosine 30 minus or plus? Minus. Minus. All right. So minus cosine 45 times sine 30. Okay, so, and you can got this one, right? Square root of two over two times square root of three over two minus square root of two over two times one over two. So which equals square root of six mm. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, consider another one. All right. So, Salim. Yeah. Find the exact value sine, um, cosine, yeah. invert, uh, invert cosine, uh, one, one, one half plus sine, invert sine, uh, three fifths. Okay. Very good. All right. Very good. Now, let's consider this one. Solution, right? So now uh, it's, it's using inverse cosine and inverse sine, right? So something interesting here. So we have, let's say that this is inverse cosine is an angle, right? You remember what inverse cosine is an angle, right? Uh, this one is also an angle, right? Okay. So you may have what, let's say that, that Alpha equals cosine inverse inverse cosine one half, and uh, beta be inverse of sine three over five. Yes. Now, if alpha is the cosine inverse, it's one half, right? Then sine alpha, then cosine. Okay, sorry. Cosine of alpha equals what? One half. Equals one half. Because alpha is the inverse cosine one half, right? So cosine alpha is one half. <laughs> now, what is, well, for this one is a special angle, right? Alpha is a special angle, right? So cosine alpha is one half, so alpha equals what? Pi over three. Pi over three, right? So we can easily, uh, this one can easily uh, find this one, right? So cosine alpha is, alpha is a pi over three because it must be between zero and zero and pi, right? So alpha is pi over three. Now then this implies what? What is sine alpha? Uh, one half? No. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, square, root square root of three over two. Mm. 
Okay, so that is the sign of alpha. Okay, now, of course, this alpha happens to be a special angle, right? So we can easily see this, right? Now, what if I do not have a special angle, right? Like the second, beta, right? So for beta equals sine inverse, inverse sine is three over five. So sine of beta equals what? Three over five. Three over five. Now, beta must be between negative pi over two to pi over two, and the sign is a positive. So beta is in the first quadrant, yes? Sign is positive, right? The sign is positive, so it uh, must be between what? Negative pi over two to pi over two. So beta must be in the first quadrant, yes? So, Cosine beta will be also positive, yes? Okay, so. Beta is in quadrant one, quadrant one, okay? So now can you find a cosine beta? We're finding sine or cosine? Cosine. Now sine is a three over five, right? It's already known. So what is cosine beta? If sine equals three over five and the beta is in quadrant one, how to find a cosine beta? Equals what? Using Pythagorean identity, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody remember this? Or you can just say what we did before is writing as what? Cosine beta square equals one minus sine square beta. Right equals what? One minus uh, three square over five square. Right. So you can find this is sixteen over twenty-five. Right. Mm -hmm. And then since the beta is in quadrant one, cosine is positive. So this implies what? Cosine beta equals square root of sixteen over twenty-five equals four over five. Does that make sense? Good. All right. Basically now is everything we need is found. All right. So now we can just simply use the formula. So sine of cosine, inverse cosine one half plus inverse sine three over five equals what? Sine of alpha plus beta, right? Sine alpha plus beta. Now using the formula, this one equals sine alpha cosine beta plus uh, cosine alpha sine beta. Do we have everything? Yes, we do, right? So we have all the sine and the cosine for alpha and beta, right? So therefore we can just plug in sine alpha is square root of three over two times cosine beta four over five plus cosine alpha one half times sine beta is three over five. So this one equals what? four square root of three over 10 plus three over 10. So it equals what? Four square root of three plus three over 10. Good. Does that make sense? Okay. So how, for these type of questions, now, especially involving inverse cosine or inverse sine or inverse tangent or something, 
you, you want to firstly find the sine and the cosine of those angles. That alpha equals one and that beta equals the other, right? And then based on the properties of inverse function, you can immediately get cosine alpha sine beta, right? And then using their restricted readings, right? And their angle there is because sine alpha, for, for instance, sine beta is positive, right? It's positive. So it must be in the first quadrant, right? And then uh, then and restrict reading is from negative power two to power two. So it is it must be in the first quadrant. And then you can find the cosine of beta, right? And similarly for uh, alpha, if it is special angle, then everything becomes easy, right? Cosine alpha is one half. So alpha is a power of three. So we can got a sign. That's pretty easy. Otherwise we got, go ahead. Uh, for do, do we have to make the in the parentheses the alpha and beta the same? Like one of them is cosine, one of them is sine. Do they have to be the same? Is that why you did? What do we mean? I don't know how to ask the question. It's just like uh, you, you, the, for the first one you find the sine. Right? Oh, so for, the, for the alpha you find the sine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very yeah, very good question, Mustafa. Find the cosine. I don't know why. Yeah. I, you don't know why, right? The, the, the thing is because alpha is given in terms of a inverse cosine, right? Okay. Alpha is inverse cosine. Then we can immediately get a cosine alpha is one half. Yes, that's why. Because it's by definition of inverse cosine, right? It, if alpha is inverse cosine one half, then cosine alpha is one half, right? Now, similarly for beta, right? Because beta is defined as inverse sine three over five, since sine beta is three over five. This is emitted result from the definition of inverse sine or inverse cosine, right? From the identities uh, we had uh, in last chapter, chapter two. Okay, so and. Uh, So okay, the sine or cosine is not a special angle. We use the Pythagorean identity. Yes, so. that's right. So we have here, right? So these are the uh, trigonometric functions, right? Sine of inverse sine is going to be just x, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is if alpha is sine uh, uh, is cosine inverse one half, then cosine alpha is simply cosine of inverse cosine one half, which is just one half. Did you see this? Right? We did this one in last class, right? Uh, in, in this not last class, but uh, section 2.3. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it's a lot of material, I understand that, right? So it's a lot of material. So, but uh, this is what we did, a sign of, Inverse sine is just going to be x, right? Cosine inverse is just going to be x and so on, right? Tangent inverse. So that's why we are having this one here because alpha is defined as a inverse cosine one half. So cosine alpha is one half. This is the emitted result from the definition, right? So that's why that's then we from cosine, we want to find sine because in this summation formula, as you can see, we would need a sine alpha, cosine alpha, sine beta, cosine beta, right? We need the sine and cosine values for each angle. You just answered my question. Thank you. That's not, oh, okay. that's not, I was All just right. confused. Now I get it. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Very good, right? Uh, very good. So for difference, the same. Sine, cosine, sine, and cosine, right? So for the two angles. All right, now let's consider uh, the sign, sum and difference formula for tangent, all right, for tangent. Okay, let alpha and beta be any two angles. We have some formula for tangent summation here is, what is gonna be the fraction, right? Tangent alpha plus tangent beta over one minus tangent alpha tangent beta. Okay, so this is for the summation. If it is summation, then the 
top is a summation, the bottom is the difference. Yes? Okay, but for the difference formula, you just take the opposite. It's gonna be what the top is the difference and the bottom is a summation, right? Did you see this? The top is the difference, the bottom is a summation, right? So uh, you got to memorize that, all right? Now in sometimes we may just use the quotient identity, right? Tangent alpha plus beta is a sine alpha plus beta over cosine, right? Tangent alpha minus beta is sine alpha minus beta over cosine alpha minus beta, by definition, right? Okay, sometimes we may just use that. If sine alpha and beta, uh, alpha, uh, uh, if the difference, uh, sine, the difference, uh, if we can use the uh, formula, uh, some formula or difference formula for sine and cosine, we find sine alpha plus beta, cosine plus alpha plus beta, then we can just use the quotient identity, right? Tangent alpha beta equals sine alpha beta over cosine alpha plus beta. Does that make sense? Okay, very good. Now let's consider example. Okay, Zhongxu. Yeah, a tangent five over four plus five over a uh, pi over three. B tangent fifteen degrees. <laughs> very good. All right, very good. Now let's consider this one. Yes. All right, let's mm -hmm. consider this one. So the first is a tangent of a summation of two special angles, right? So tangent of pi over four plus pi over three. Now by the formula, right? The sum formula for tangent, it equals what? The summation on the top as a tangent, the first pi over four, plus tangent second pi over three over what? The bottom became what? Difference one, one minus, right? Their product. Mm -hmm. Which equals, uh, what is tangent pi over four? Anybody remember that? One. One. Very good. How about detecting the pi over three? All right, these special angles, you gotta memorize those. All right, the square root of three. Okay, square root of three, all right? So then it is one minus one times square root of three. Yes? Now, can you simplify this one? This one equals what? Cancel out the square roots. Yeah, right. yeah. How do we do that? All right, uh, one minus square root of three, one plus square root of three, right? Remember that? That's a, a common technique if you have a square root, right? So, and then on the top is one plus square root of three times one plus square root of three. Yes? On the bottom become one square minus square root of three square, that is what? Three, right? On the top is one plus square root of three square. Yes? So which equals on the bottom is one minus three. On the top, what is on the top? The complete square, What what is that? Anybody remember this formula? The complete square equals what? Anybody remember this one? The complete square uh, formula, right? So a square plus b square plus two ab. Okay, for this one, a is one, so it's one square plus what? Square root of three, square, and plus what? Two times one times 
square root of three. Yes. So this one equals on the bottom is negative two, and the top is one plus three plus two square root of three, which equals negative two four plus two square root of three. Now can we simplify it? Equals what? Two times two plus square root of three over negative two. Yes. So it equals what? Negative two plus square root of three, which is negative two, negative square root of three. Does that make sense? All right. We used a lot of uh, techniques to reduce this one into a simpler, <laughs> simpler one, right? So uh, uh, this is a long process. Okay. Now, or you can just use a calculator, right? So this equals whatever you get using the calculator. Works. Plug in the calculator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can get something here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, uh, what we did here is to rationalize the denominator, right? Rationalize the denominator and simplify it. Okay, so, but that's uh, not necessary for our class, all right? But you can just use a calculator if you want to, all right? Now I'm going to erase a part of this one. Okay. Consider the second. Can you solve the second? How can you? It's 15 degrees. This one can be written as what? 45 minus 30. Yeah, 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So using the formula, this one equals, on the top is a uh, difference, right? Mm -hmm. On the bottom, it becomes plus. So this one equals what? On the top is one minus, what is tangent to 30 degrees? Anybody remember that? Okay, square root of three over three, all right? So which mm -hmm. is the, okay. <laughs> all right, so it's square root of three over three, all right? So on the bottom it has become one plus one times square root of three over three. Now, can you use a calculator? Let's just use a calculator for this one, all right? We can just use a calculator. One my, in the parentheses, all right? On the top is in the parentheses. One minus uh, square root of three over three, close the parentheses, divided by a parentheses one plus one times uh, square root of three uh, over three, uh, close the parentheses. What did you get? I got one. Mm, that's not right. Did you use the parentheses? Mm -hmm. I must have. I must you have. must have done something wrong. It's one minus on the bottom is one plus. Did you use okay. two plus? I think I, I may add one to me parentheses there. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I got point two six seven nine. Yep. Point two six seven nine. It should be this one. Got this? Okay. Okay. Very good. Are we good? Mm. Okay. Now let's consider this one. Mustafa, can you read for us, please? Given that sine of alpha equals three over five, 
where where alpha is a bigger than zero and less than pi over two cosine of beta equals negative five over 13 where beta is bigger than pi and less than three pi over three find <laughs> sorry sorry this, sine, is sorry this should be two sorry oh okay three pi over two find uh, sine alpha plus beta b of cosine alpha plus beta c tangent alpha plus beta and d tangent alpha minus beta okay very good all right so here this question is actually a question that uh, utilize what a sine cosine tangent all of them right so we got to find the uh, all of them so how can we do that now here is something we need. Uh, let's first let's see what we need, right? In order to find the sine alpha and beta, we would need what? The value for sine alpha, the value for cosine alpha, right? Uh, sine of beta, cosine of beta. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, for cosine, it's the same thing, right? It's still the four four values. Correct? We would need this, correct? Okay, now what about for tangent? What do we need to find a tangent alpha plus beta? We would need a tangent alpha and tangent beta. Yes, as you can see from the formulas, we just need what? Tangent alpha and tangent beta, right? In order to find their uh, using their uh, involved in the sum and difference formula for tangent, yes? So basically, before we do this one, we would need these values. What is sine and cosine alpha? What is sine and cosine beta? What is tangent and alpha and tangent beta? If we got these ones, just plug in the formulas. Everything would be good. Yes? Now, of course, another one is we see that uh, part of C tangent alpha plus beta is a sine alpha plus beta over cosine plus beta, right? So that's an easy one, right? But for B part, we would need tangent alpha tan beta, right? Now, can we find given, based on the given information, can we find these values? That's going to be the first step, right? To find these values, right? find these values based on the given information. Right, so here is the solution. Now, since sine alpha is three over five, alpha is in the first quadrant. Yes, mm -hmm. it's given greater than zero, less than pi over two is in the first quadrant. So cosine alpha is what? Uh, well, since sine alpha is three over five and alpha greater than zero, less than pi over two. Uh, cosine alpha equals what? Anybody remember? We can just uh, use what? One minus sine square alpha. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this one equals what? Four over five. If you uh, if you remember clearly, or we we do we did one problem just recently. Now it's a sine beta is three over four, three over five. Cosine beta is four over five. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we just did this one. Okay, we just did this one. So we're not going to uh, to repeat this one, but this one cosine alpha is going to be four over five. Yes? Okay, so then we are done with, then tangent alpha is what? Sine alpha over cosine alpha equals uh, three over five, four over five. This is going to be three over four. Yes? Okay, very good. Uh, we already got three of them, right? Are all the values for us uh, for alpha. Now, similarly, we can do uh, for beta. Since cosine beta is negative five over thirteen, and beta pi less than beta less than three pi over two. Okay, so we have what? Sine of beta equals 
Now, what is sine beta? Sine beta is in the third quadrant, right? Greater than pi less than three pi over two. So it's in the third quadrant. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is the sign of sine? Negative. Negative. So it equals negative square root of one minus cosine beta square. All right, you can find this one is negative what? 12 over 13. Okay, so you can use a calculator and you, can, you will find that this, this one is negative 12 over 13. Okay, just a plug in and you find this. So then we got what? Turned in the beta is what? Negative 12 over 13 over negative 5, 13. Yes. What is that? 5 over 12. I mean, 12 over 5. 12 over 5. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now we are ready, right? So we have got all the sine, cosine, and tangent values of alpha and beta, respectively. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we have got all these values needed. Then we can just move on to solve these values, right? So what is going to be sign? B, A, B, C, and D. Go ahead and solve these four, please. Mm. Right. Okay. 